you have ever worked with JSON you know it is a great way to store data and later read it back. So wouldn't it be nice if you could use it in Haskell? That is exactly what the ESIN package is for. Using ESIN you can parse and encode your own custom data types from and into JSON. The library is easy to use for simple structures, but becomes harder to use as you implement more complex ones. This video will try to explain how to set up and use it. To use ESIN you first need to create a new folder for your project. After that you need to open a terminal, navigate to the location of your project, and execute the following commands. Stack new. This will create a new folder containing your project. Stack install ESIN. This will install ESIN. Then you will see a couple of new files, including a package.yaml file. Add ESIN under dependencies in the package.yaml file. Check if everything is running correctly. Add import data. ESIN to your main.hs file and run the command stack run. Say we have some data type player we want to convert to a JSON string. To achieve this, we need to make player an instance of the toJSON type class. Thanks to ESIN, however, we don't have to write our own instances if the data type derives from the generic type class because it can use the methods that generic provides to infer how to encode a data type into JSON. To allow us to easily have our data type derived from the generic type class, we can enable the derived generic language option by putting the following line at the top of our main.hs file. Then, we can import GHC to generics and make player derive from generic. Player contains any other types that can't already be converted by ESIN that type needs to derive from generic as well. We can then make an instance of to JSON like this. After having done this, we can convert any player to a string in JSON format using encode. For example, if we encode the below example of a player object, we get the following. Now that we have a JSON string, it would be tremendously scrumptious to write that to a file somewhere. Since encode returns a byte string, we can use the existing module data.bytestring.lazy to write this data to a file. We can also use the qualified keyword in the import statement to be able to use a custom identifier for a module. Using this module, we can write a function that takes a player and writes the JSON data to a file. Running the function with a random example player yields the following result. Storing JSON is nice, but how do we convert it back to a player? First of all, we need to make an instance of from JSON for the type we want to convert. In our case, this is player, which already derives the generic type class as mentioned before. This means we don't actually have to manually implement the methods for the from JSON type class. Now, we can use the decode function to turn any correct JSON string into a player. Keep in mind that decode returns a player object wrapped in a maybe type, representing whether ESIN has correctly parsed the string. Let's read back the player data from the file we just wrote to player.json. We can once again use the data.bytestring.lazy module to read a file and get byte string back. Then we can feed that byte string into the decode function and get our player back making player derive from show and then executing load, we can see that indeed we get our original player object back. JSON does not always have your back. There are times when you have to write a custom instance for your data type. For the from JSON type class, this can be done by defining the parse JSON function for the player data type. But simply, the following syntax allows you to define what fields of the JSON object correspond to which attribute in the player data type. So the first field in the JSON object is the health attribute in the player data type. To make the syntax a bit easier to understand, we also add the following language option to our file, which allows us to treat string-like types like byte string or text just the same as we would regular string values. For JSON this we need to define the toJSON function in the instance by pattern matching on player and defining how the attributes of the player object are to be turned into the fields in a JSON object. As you can see, writing custom instances takes a bit more effort than simply letting ESIN do the work for you. After all, Haskell itself is lazy, so why shouldn't the programmer be as well? That was it for today's video, guys. Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and comment your favorite thing about ESIN below. 
I hope you have a lovely day or night wherever you are from, and I'll see you later. Peace.